when it gets up there. Hi everybody, Samantha. I'm in the kitchen today to talk to you about the five ways to prep. The theme this week is salads, so how to prep for your lunches. But I mean, in reality, this can go beyond lunches. Maybe you're like me and you eat dinner for breakfast sometimes. Um, there are no rules, but we're going to just go through five salads that I picked out. They're my go-to's. And so I thought that would be helpful to share. We've been asked several times by students to share us cooking. Um, really, Emilio and I try to provide, Negrito is present, so if you hear him meowing, that's just our cat. Um, so yeah, so just let me know in the comments as we're going through this, if you have any questions, but we're asked all the time if we if we have cooking that we can show or anything like that. And the reason why we're here tonight is to promote our uh, Find Your Vita Facebook page, Instagram, um, and you can find us on our website at findyourvita.com. Uh, so just go over there and like and subscribe if you haven't seen us there before. And I'm gonna start in on the five salads. I will share with you the recipes and why I love these. The first one that we're gonna make is a 14 day cabbage salad. This is, um, a cabbage salad from my great grandmother um, and forgive me because I'm not a chef I have friends who are red sealed chefs and so I feel sometimes intimidated but the reality is I've worked in a lot of hospitality and kitchens um, and so I have garnered a lot of skills and learned a lot of tricks of the trade if you will um, so if you know Brandon and Kate you guys are out there don't judge me too hard um, so yeah so we're gonna start with um, our 14 day cabbage salad. So I've chosen a uh, purple cabbage because I think it's super beautiful. And we're go also going to use this in the last recipe that we make today. Um, and I'll just point my, my camera down a little bit now so that you can see my workstation. And basically I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing with it here is that I use a, a quote unquote chef's knife. This is the size, it's a larger one. Um, and I like it because there's more control. It's super sharp. And I always have my sharpener here. This was um, an awesome stocking stuffer from my parents. It was from Lee Valley, so I really like it. A couple swipes of my knife through that before I get started. I can see the camera. Always means, oh, and Emilio's here. So you're going to hear him every now and again. He's going to pick up the camera and he's going to give you kind of a more intimate experience with there what you I'm go. doing. I like this more now. Okay, Emilio was fidgeting a lot, so we'll let him hold the camera and then we'll put it back on the tripod, okay? So sharpen my knife. I've got my cutting board here, just a basic cutting board with a wet cloth underneath. And the reason why I do that is that so it doesn't slide and move when I'm cutting. But I'm doing the 14 day cabbage coleslaw. It's super fast. It goes with so many different things. So whether you're vegetarian or you are having a meat, um, this is a really nice kind of pickled styled uh, cabbage slaw that's super simple um, and goes together in minutes. I am going to use um, the food processor to shred the cabbage because I don't want to do everything by hand, but you are capable of doing it. Uh, by hand so it will be noisy for a second so yeah so let me know why you're here uh, if you are watching right now it would make me feel really good if you said hi or said that it's okay that I'm nervous or something like that um, this salad I've had many many times my grandma always made it with green uh, cabbage I take my compost and I have my compost right on the kitchen. We always do. It's coming on summertime and it is going to head into the fridge soon so that we don't have a fruit fly problem like many of you. So I'm just cutting my cabbage and I won't cut my hand. And then I'm going to cut it into sections that will fit in my food processor. And we want about five cups. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't follow a recipe. I eyeball it. Um, except for the, the actual vinaigrette. So I just do about a, a one and a half of the actual cabbage. This is how much is left over. And then that lasts quite a long time for my family, which is two adults and one toddler. Um, and it's pretty delicious. So it's gonna get noisy, but you'll see why I use this. It's because it's super fast and it makes a hard process that my grandma used to do by hand go by in a matter of seconds. This is the cheapest version of a food processor from Canadian Tire if you're from Canada. That's a little bit too tall. 
um, and it's beautiful. It's black and decker. Um, I used it at the cafe that I worked at, so that's why I knew that it would work. And I would say that we've had it for how many years now, Emilio? Probably three or four at least. Three or four. Hello Salma, hello Melinda, hello Laura, hello M. Hi Laura, thanks for coming. And Melinda, and who else did you say? Salma. Salma, thank you for coming. And M. If you're local and you've been wanting some salads for your week, you can always stop by after and get some. We're not going to be able to eat all five of them. And that is it for the food processor. Um, it is stored in our cupboard in the kitchen. We've made space for it because it is super handy to have that and be able to use it. So I'm gonna transfer it oh, into a Tupperware bowl. It is a glass Tupperware bowl, but it doesn't matter. Um, but if you are going to pour the dressing on it directly, it will go into something hot or sorry something hot is going into it so you want to kind of keep that in mind whatever container you're putting it into and there are two pieces that didn't really get hey Rasa. what up Rasa? welcome from bc nice to see you so our meal planning course now has something like 800 students in it from over, over 60 countries and our meal planning course, we always just talked about the system of how to make a meal plan, not what to eat or how to eat or how many times. We are not, um, what are those? We're a nutritionist. Um, we are not a doctor, but we eat pretty much a plant-based um, like kind of meal grouping, but we did incorporate meat back into our diet after our daughter was born. So that is kind of creeped in, but we, we like exploring all types of foods from all different types of cultures. Um, and salads just go universal. Everybody's got a go-to salad. It's what makes potluck super special and fun because you get to try something different. Yeah. And I will show you how I clean my food processor because it's fast and amazing and I do run a bit of water so I do appreciate how important water is but this means that I'm not taking as much of my time I do do it right afterwards as well a nice trick use your knife along the edge here to don't get cut any. yourself <laughs> don't cut yourself Kids who are not familiar around the kitchen, I hope none of you are watching me. You're probably not. It's 8 o'clock on a Saturday. Our, da our daughter is asleep. Yeah, Paula says that she's going to get one of those food processors. Yeah, girl. It handled the cabbage very fast. I, be I believe that this was around $35, and we bought it five years ago, or more. Maybe it's more than five years. So that's how I clean... Yeah, the secret is not to let it dry. Yeah. And then with everything that came off, rub it into the, the sink here right away. Good assist, sous chef. There we go. So that's that. And I'm going to put these in the compost. So anyways, now that we have this here, now we're just making the dressing. So you do need to bring it to a boil. I just have a regular pot here and I'm going to do a third of a cup, yeah, a third of a cup of sugar, which this is how things stay pickled. Um, some people have an aversion to white sugar, but you can use syrup. So if you have maple syrup or agave syrup, um, you can use coconut sweetener. There's lots of different types of sweetener. This is the only thing we're using sugar for. Um, and the only reason that we use it is because it's important to the pickling process. I'm going to do a quarter cup of vegetable oil and it's just regular vegetable oil. You can use sunflower, anything that has no flavor, um, avocado. We're not, um, making this have a burn or anything like that. So I don't think you have to worry about the toxicity of your oil. And then the last step is a quarter cup of vinegar. 
And I can hear our daughter crying, actually. Yeah. So potentially Amelia will have to go and see what's going on. Yep, I'm just gonna put this she is here. missing her favorite toy, Athelito, and I don't know where he went. So I have no idea how that happened. There you go. You can see me? Yep. Okay. So once those three ingredients, I'm going to say them again, one third of a cup of sugar, a quarter cup of oil, and a quarter cup of vinegar, I'm just going to put that on almost maximum. So just in between maximum, medium. We just have a, an electric stove and I'm going to stir it and you can sit with me while we're stirring it. Um, you can share with me if you have a go-to salad that you kind of make on a weekly basis. I know a couple of friends who eat the same salad every day for lunch. Um, so it really depends on what it is that you're cooking, what you're eating. But this one, we eat this in the summertime, especially probably once once to twice a week because it's just it's in the fridge a couple spoonfuls we really like to have a plate with like a lot of different little things going on almost like tapas Amelia's from barcelona uh, we met in new zealand in 2012 if you didn't know that and then we came to canada shortly after and started our business here but yeah so this is a really great side if you're having fish and chips or anything like that if you like wraps or you want to put it on top of a sandwich it's really really good and like i said it stays for two weeks in the fridge my aunt um kim shared this recipe with me but it was my father's grandmother who who shared this recipe so it's really simple been around a long time and the only other thing that we're going to add is a little bit of celery seeds you don't have to i just really like the taste of it so you do uh, a quarter, a quarter teaspoon and put it in. And then you can also put a little bit of salt. You don't have to have salt if you don't want, um, but I like it. Oh yeah, remind them that tomorrow we're doing another one. Oh yeah, so tomorrow Emilio is doing a Facebook Live in the kitchen again. Um, we're, we're sharing a lot about our meal planning because it tends to be one of the more popular um, topics that we we talk about and share about um probably you have a meal planning kind of exercise this is our meal plan here so up on the board here we plan the week ahead i've left it blank so we could fill it in tomorrow when emilio does it and we're at the end of the week normally we meal plan on fridays but we're just bringing this salad dressing to a boil yeah thank you laura for offering help but eva went back to bed she just needed the covers up but thank you for offering. We're trying to teach Eva how to be able to be a little bit more independent in bed with, uh, with pulling up her covers. She has her water bottle in bed and that kind of thing. Um, but I still think, you know, she's only two and three months. So it's okay that she she's needs mom and dad good. every now and again. Um, so after we're making this one, I actually want to save a little bit of the cabbage on the side. So I am going to put a little bit in a bowl um, because it's going to also go into our... Um, salad rolls that we're making at the end and uh, these five salads you can make them in an hour so like I'm going to do or you can add one of them to your go-to kind of recipes so I'm just going to set this to the side for salad rolls afterwards and I tried to choose ingredients that were overlapping so that's why we're doing the cabbage salad the mango salad the salad rolls the broccoli and cheese in the Greek because they're all similar ingredients. So total for all of these, there are 23 ingredients. And Emilio, what were you going to say? No, nothing. Um, and I, has I, Emilio has the image of all the salad uh, with the ingredients and the recipes that he'll share in the comments so that you don't have to worry about keeping track of what's in what. Um, so we'll do that. And our salad dressing is almost up to a boil, which is great. Um, everything else, there's no cooking involved except toasting some sesame seeds, which we'll do in our toaster oven. The toaster oven's a pretty big, so all right. Oh, can you, sh can you show this? Yep. This is what I want you to get it to look like. So you just want it to come to a quick boil. You can turn it off and that's all we needed to kind of get that sugar into the vinegar and oil. And then we pour it over top of the salad and we'll give it one little stir. And you can see the color of the of the cabbage which is why i really like the purple cabbage one because it's just so beautiful so when you put it on your plate you're like i feel like i'm getting healthier just because i'm eating purple it's a beautiful color it is 
Has anybody seen the moon tonight, by the way? Because it is rising and it is almost full. Tomorrow is a full moon. Just want everybody to know. So this is all I do. It's literally all been covered. I would put my lid on that. You could eat it right away. You could serve it for dinner right away. But I personally like it when it's cold. So I'll just seal it. And then it's going to go in the fridge like that. And it's good for two weeks. So it's so delicious. And maybe you have a version of coleslaw like that already. But that is ours. The next one we're going to do is mango salad. So I am going to just quickly clear my cutting board. I'm going to share the recipes in the chat. And... You can see me? Yep. Awesome. So we're going to need mango. We're going to need a bell pepper. I chose a red bell pepper, or Emilio did. He did the shopping. A couple limes, red onion. I've got everything set out on the counter beside me. And then we're just using um, some chili flakes, as well as some oil and a little bit of maple syrup. So bear with me. Everybody might peel their mango a little bit differently. By the way, if you're curious how our kitchen is set up, we've actually done a decluttering of our kitchen, a before and after, and it's on our YouTube channel at KW Professional Organizers. But yeah, so I'm just gonna peel my mango. I start at the top. Well, this one's a little bit brown on the bottom, but we had one last night and it was super sweet. So I know it tastes good. How do you pick out a mango? I mean, honestly, you can get them when they're green, but then you just have to be patient, leave them on the counter. You don't put them in the fridge if you want them to ripen. Um, if you want them to ripen well, I would leave it outside of the fridge. Almost all fruits I leave out except for berries. Um, tomatoes I always leave out. That's technically a fruit, I guess they tell us. So once you get all the skin off, and mangoes are quite slippery, so just make sure, I like to hold it in my whole hand, kind of with my finger and thumb locking it in, um, but it really depends on the size of your hand too. So, compost. Everything that we're going to make with this salad is a thick kind of julienne, which is basically like long sticks kind of idea. So my mango I take with the, the pit at the top, or the pit, the stem at the top, and then I cut a little bit on the inside. So I'm cutting right down. It almost went on the floor. Sweet save. Were you guys like, was that the most dramatic thing that's happened this whole Facebook Live? You're like, oh shit, the mango. Oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. But anyways, I digress. Cutting alongside the pit. And you can see it's a little bit dark here. We'll just cut that part out. And then I'm going to cut alongside the pit. And if you've never cut a mango before and you're intimidated about it, Go to YouTube University because there are people who like show you like really quickly and efficiently how to do that. So I'm just going to cut off these bad spots. Don't let the bad spots of fruit, vegetables in the sink is okay. Um, turn you off of something because often it's the seconds, the fruit that are damaged that taste the best. I feel like it's like they're, they're um, Darwinian trying to survive. So I'm going to cut my mango into long strips. there. This is my pit and I'm going to put that in the compost. Amelia is only slightly intimidating me by being really close. And I'm going to grab my bowl in a sec. You can add garlic to this. You can add cucumber to this. This is a really kind of delicious salad. If you're not vegetarian or vegan, you can add fish oil um, and that just gives it a little bit of a Thai flavoring. And if it was summertime, I would be adding Thai basil into the salad or mint or something like that. But I don't have any herbs out of the garden right now. And Emilio didn't, couldn't find any at the grocery store when he and Eva went. So we just have to make do with what we have. But the good thing about this salad is that it doesn't really need a lot because you've got like the mango, really simple flavors. You really want to taste any of the super brown ones. I probably would just eat those. Like, I wouldn't put them in, but I'd be like, oh, I'm going to eat that, because that's really good. We don't throw anything here. No. It actually tastes delicious. It just doesn't look nice. So if you're going to a party to impress, 
What do you usually shop for your mangoes? Laura asks. Where do you what? Shop for your mangoes. Oh, I, my preference is in and around the fall. They sell them at the market, the Kitchener Market. But I definitely just use the grocery store um, for mangoes like out of season. If I can't get to the market with COVID, we haven't been going to the market. It's just not really the same. We do try. But Fresh Go on University and Bridge is where we go. So this is, again, just like long kind of sticks. And maybe I didn't talk through how I cut my peppers, but I definitely cut down four walls from the top. And I learned that from Kate Kualchuk because it makes it, so if the pepper's like this, I have the stem at the top, I cut down a side, I turn it, I cut down a side. This one came to a point, I would generally like cut this off and use this too. It's pretty small, so I'll just eat it and put that away um so yeah so the reason why i do that is that it helps you cut really straight lines afterwards because you're basically working with rectangles does anybody else have any questions yeah guys feel free to ask any questions i'm seeing the chat and i can ask them anything that you guys um, want to know i cut it in half so that we just kind of got like matchsticks and i throw it in here and this is for about like um for adults i would say and this is to go alongside you know you could do fish you could do a rice you could do a curry you might just want to eat this with some grilled chicken or tofu my sink tends to be a catch-all i do clean it on a regular basis so hopefully that's not grossing anybody out we're going to do the zest of one lime i need my zester i want to show it to you too because it's super cute it's like a parmesan cheese mini grater but I use it for zesting. I know that there's other ones, but I kind of like that this one kind of gives big chunks of zest. So see that? Mm. Can you see? Yeah. Um, it smells good. I wish you guys could be in here smelling the lime. How many people are tired of COVID? I'm glad that we're kind of uh, getting our vaccinations. My grandmother's been vaccinated. My neighbor's been vaccinated. Hopefully we will be vaccinated by June. I'm excited about that. Um, I know Eva and other parents are definitely excited. So I've zested the lime of one, and then I'm going to squeeze. Show all them of that them. little thing. This is Emilio's purchase from a secondhand store. I love it. He loves it. It comes apart in three pieces, but the juice just falls in below. So the only problem is that you don't get pulp, um, which is like kind of I like pulp. Some people don't like pulp, but it is a beautiful little. This, this, one, isn't, this isn't our only zester either. Show no, the other one. so that one, I actually bought it for lemons because uh, it collects the, the, the pits from the lemon. For limes, we normally use this one because lime doesn't have pits, so you can just squeeze it right away. But lemons, all the pits, you don't want them in the salad. So that's why this guy is really good for lemons. So I'm just going to do that. It, it was full after one and a half. These were juicy. So I'm going to squeeze the last one. It's Laura's here. Laura, this kind of reminds me of your, your cucumber red onion salad a little bit. Um, I don't think we need juice for any other one, but I'm going to keep it to the side here. So once we've done that, I did that now because it's going to help keep the mango from going brown. Like the sooner you can add the citrus, the better. And then we're just going to use half a red onion. Put that in there. Just pinch off the end so that I can... And why red? And no... I yeah. like red because of the flavor. Uh, if you like onion, you can add more or less depending on your family's preference kind of thing. I'm a big onion fan, the more the merrier. Um, but the red is colorful, so it just brings out a really nice color. Um, and also I think the flavor is a little bit less aggressive than some of like the cooking onions that you might have, but mostly it's because of the color. It's just pretty. So all of these were cut kind of to the same texture and, and length. And the reason being um, uniformity in the salad kind of makes it feel good. So that's probably enough red onion with the lime juice. And I'm just doing it with my hands because why not? It's, it's hard. Like this is not generally how I would be set up exactly in the kitchen because you guys are here and we wanted to have it so that it was easy and fast to teach, but 
Everybody cooks in their own style. I can actually even get rid of this, that this doesn't need to be here anymore. And I would put it under the counter, but Jose's there. So yeah, so now I'm just gonna pour in a little bit of olive oil. I think I said that I would only use a tablespoon. So I'll measure it just for the sake of this. So a tablespoon and I'll pour that in. I normally eyeball everything. So if you're somebody who eyeballs, just eyeball. Yeah, that's okay too. It's awesome. Maple syrup. I forgot to get it out. Because we live in Canada and we have access to it. Oh, I think I said to measure this too. So just a tablespoon, I said. I'm a big fan of the three-part salad dressing. We were just talking about this with friends. That I do um, one part sweet, one part vinegar, one part oil. Um, that's because I do... I like the balance that it offers things. I don't like things to be too tangy. I don't like things to be too sweet. Um, I just like the balance of that. Plus, we're supposed to eat more fats and that kind of thing. So that's good. So this is a beautiful salad. This is it. You could add cilantro. You could add mint, a little bit of green uh, green onion, spring onion. And then that would kind of like bust out these ca uh, colors. But it's delicious as it is. Um, so I would let that sit for a little bit before I served it. But that's it. So I'm going to put it in the fridge. How, how would you store it in the fridge if you're not eating it today? I would, store, I would store it in the same Tupperware style that we did the cabbage salad. And I just did these bowls because I thought it would make things kind of look yeah. pretty to have their own individual bowl. So the next one we're doing yeah. is... Salina, feel free to bring your plate because we're going to have leftover salad for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're in Uptown Waterloo. So again, we're moving on to the next salad. Um, and this one is going to be a broccoli salad. It's a big hit with my family and myself. Um, but it is a take on one that traditionally is done with bacon, but I don't use bacon in it. I use uh, toasted sunflower seeds, but it uses cheddar cheese, broccoli, a red onion, and it's a mayo-based kind of dressing, so it's really good. So. Because we're doing the sesame seeds, I always like to toast nuts because it brings out the flavor kind of if you've seen some cooking where they always heat up in the oil the herbs or the spices they're using. It's because it brings out a richer f flavor and it's the same with the nuts. So this is our toaster oven. I just have them spread on the, on the sheet and I'm not using a timer because it's built in, but I just do one setting of the toast. So however long I cook my toast for, that's going to be the same here. And then I'm going to use that to garnish the top of it afterwards. So what would you say for people who don't have a, an a oven, toaster, oven? toaster oven? Yeah, You can use a pan or a, a pan. pot and toast them on top of the oven. Um, I don't think that you could do something, you could use like an actual oven. That's why our toaster oven is, is super beneficial because we can use it gonna get our broccoli salad bowl here because it goes kind of straight in um, you could also not be fancy at all with the bowls we could just put it in something like this to serve on the table we're not big into like making a presentation but if we go to someone's house which we haven't done in forever I would put it in a cooler looking bowl just so that it looks more fun so all I'm doing with this broccoli is cutting off the crowns I'll show you what I do to use a little bit of the stem as well There we go. And so when I get a bigger chunk, I just cut it into four. Um, because really you do want kind of larger style bites. You could do this in half if you wanted to. Um, now with Eva, actually, I would probably like cut these all in half because then it makes it easier. But she also likes to just like pick it up from the salad and eat it like this. So just whatever your preference. Did anybody ever have this style of salad that was with like the bacon and the cheese and the red onions? Because I feel like if you went to a, a picnic or a potluck or something like that, it would have had to have appeared once or twice. So I've cut my, um, my stem into four because it actually tastes just as good as broccoli, but because of its like big, thick, meaty condition, it often is like, ew, who wants to eat that? Um, so I cut it up into nice small cubes and then people don't really notice that they're eating it and they're like, oh, you can trick people who said I don't eat the stems into eating the stems. That's what I like to do to people, trick them with food. Yeah, you can also save them for, for a stir fry or for something else if you it's don't want them in the salad. Is Rezzy still there? Does he ever eat these types of salads? 
he sent us some pretty sweet images of like what he was cooking for I don't know if he was meal planning or if he was just like in a cooking mood but our friend Reza man he's single and he knows how to cook he's a catch he's a catch and he lives in BC yeah so doing the same thing I'm using two crowns um, it depends on what season you're buying your broccoli. If it's in season, like one crown is definitely sufficient because they can get really big. Um, so just, it really depends on how much broccoli is per head. So you do that. And normally I'd have music playing, like to enjoy cooking for me, I need to really not have um, too many distractions. But I love to have music, something I can sing along to. Um, Emilio, I think, listens to podcasts and things like yeah, that. Yeah, I listen to podcasts. So I put my phone on a little tripod and I maybe watch something, uh, a YouTube using video. A quarter of an onion, um, peeling the skin. Sorry to interrupt you, babe. Yeah, no, just uh, whatever you like doing uh, while you are doing chores. Like you can have music on, you can have your favorite show playing in the background, you can have a, an audiobook, uh, whatever you want to be doing. Just to make it more enjoyable. And I can hear the sunflowers popping. Sunflowers popping to me is a sign that I want to <laughs> check it because I don't yeah. want them to cook too much. Um, but I actually think that it's perfect. It's just some like outliers that were popping. So it's not it's not too cooked yet. This is a, this is a toast grabber so that you don't burn your fingers. My far friend makes things like that or used to make things like that with wood. So how do I cut this red onion too? I just want you to see because I'm going to do a fine dice of this of this onion. So I'm going to cut it into squares, probably how most people cut their red onion, but I'm just slowing down so everybody sees. So once I've cut them all on its edge, it's okay that there's broccoli on them because they're going in the same style. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to cut into four chunks or sorry, small square chunks. When I get to this part on the onion where it's really close to my hand and I can't hold it, I flip it one more time and then I keep cutting because there's more space for my fingers to be sitting on, less likely for me to cut or hurt myself. And um, I always sharpen my knife before I think as I shared because cutting yourself generally comes when your knife is dull or you're distracted. So the truth is, it's better to have a, sh uh, I'm going to put everything into the sink and then I'm going to put it in the compost after just because we're, we're doing this. Um, it's better to have a sharp knife. So if you're just joining us recently, I just want to let you know the reason why we're doing this tonight is because we are launching our new academy on Find Your Vita, which is all about, oh, look at this. I burnt them. These are, these are definitely burnt, but don't worry because I'm going to set them outside and I'm probably still going to use them. Sometimes when they appear to be burnt, they're not actually burnt. I'm setting them outside so they cool down faster. <laughs> yeah, this is our daughter. She's almost still awake, but kind of relaxed in there. So that's good. So Rasa says, I don't typically have broccoli style salads, but this looks good. Yeah, Rasa, it's really delicious. I really like it. So you should give it a try for sure. Okay. So now I'm just using an old style cheddar cheese. Uh, you can use whatever cheese. Sometimes I'll use Havarti or I'll use like an aged cheddar. Um, but this, because we were making this menu, I went for a cheap brick of cheese. So go ahead and use something like that. I cut how much I'm going to use. I don't measure this again. This is definitely an eyeball, but this is probably about 200 grams because it's one third of the bar for anybody who's paying attention to. Yeah, recipe. you can always. Um, you share the recipe, right? I, I couldn't share it in the comments. It doesn't allow me to attach a file. So we'll just attach it to. To the event, I think. Yeah. So again, I'm just going to shred cheese into this. Nothing special. Very special. Yeah, but I mean like super basic. Keep in mind, we're already, we're on our third salad and we are 30 minutes into this presentation and I'm talking. Um, I have made these salads before though. So like sometimes when you, this bowl is silly. Yeah, sometimes it takes a few times for you to get familiar with the ingredients and the chopping. But once you repeat a, a, a recipe a few times, you become way faster and you don't have to think as much. So you do want like a good kind of portion of cheese in here because it is like it makes the broccoli creamy and like kind of like a dip. But I would say that that is heaps. 
yeah. Salina says over one cup of shred cheese. Uh, I don't know the conversion of cups with uh, the weight. Well, she probably just did it. So there you go. I will wrap this in the beeswax and put it back in the fridge. But for right now, I'm just going to set it over here. Yeah, when you make this salad, just remember that this is personal choice too. Some people may like more broccoli, less cheese. Some people may like more cheese, less broccoli, more onion, less onion. You choose the quantities and I you experiment until you find the... And our, like, honestly, our, our course was really always about how to set up a meal plan no matter what you were cooking. So it's not about what you're eating. We're not trying to tell you what's the best for you. It's about how do you make sure you're enjoying cooking and enjoying the food that you're making and doing it so that it's stress-free. It's not something that's stressful. Yeah, tomorrow I will be speaking about that. Okay, I will be speaking about the organization around the meal planning so, so we, that you can have some techniques and tips. Yeah. We always keep a little um, resealable jam jar because that's what we shake our dressings into. So I'm just gonna do this one, which is a little bit of olive oil. I'm not going to measure it, but I did supply a recipe. I'm gonna do apple cider vinegar. I'm doing double the amount that I did for oil. I'm gonna do just a little bit. I'll measure your, your maple syrup so that's not overwhelming to taste because you definitely don't want this to be sweet. It's a savory style. But you don't want it to be so tart that it's the kids won't eat it. And Eva really likes this salad a lot. And then she I'm gonna put- She drinks a, the dressing out of yeah, the bowl. <laughs> I'm gonna put a, a tablespoon of mayonnaise just to make it creamy. I think the original recipe called for quite a bit of mayonnaise. I'm just going to grab a spoon, babe. Um, and this is like by adding the vinegar and the oil, you're able to cut that down. And I'm just going to put a cup in there or a cup, a tablespoon. It's funny. I'll put that away. And I haven't forgot about my, my burnt sunflower seeds, but just shake it. And that's good and then pour it over top I can't have black pepper right now but I am gonna put a little bit of sea salt and I would generally put a couple dashes of a barbecue sauce or not a barbecue sauce that's the wrong word it's um a natural uh, like smoke flavor so it's like smoked water uh, we use it a lot on tempeh and tofu and things like that but it just gives the essence of kind of barbecue so only a couple dashes of it and it's just like I wish you could smell it it smells like delicious barbecue yeah Salina how long can the dressing stay in the fridge uh, we normally make it uh, sometimes we make it on, on the Sunday and we use it all the way to Wednesday Thursday and dressings because it has vinegar and salt, they stay... Hold on, hold on. Big disclaimer here. Emilio will eat soggy salad. That's I, the thing. Like... I will not eat soggy salad. For me, this is either eaten tonight, so it can be made in the morning and then you eat it for the evening. No, but just the, the dressing. The oh, dressing just the itself. dressing. Yeah. Oh, the dressing can last for two weeks yeah. in the fridge in a sealed container. Sorry. We, we, we never had a salad dressing going bad in the fridge and it's been over a week sometimes. And these, these taste great. So although they're a little dark, it's actually really good. So I'm dumping all those in. And that's our salad number three. I'm going to spin it up. And I'll put it back in the nice container so that you can see it. It's nice if you can let this one sit because the broccoli really has time to kind of absorb some of the dressing. Um, it's, um, it's just more flavorful. The cheese kind of melts into it. The red onions, it's beautiful. You could even put half cherry tomatoes in here just to give it a pop of color of like the red or a little bit of diced red pepper is another kind of um, substitution I've seen into this recipe. Raisins or cranberries is also something else. Um, we can sometimes do chickpeas and things like that. So. so what's this like? Does it feel like it's a Jamie Oliver show or does it feel like it's a... Definitely the Sam Christopherson and Amelia Jose show. <laughs> we we say, uh, Salina says, who eats soggy salad? I actually drink it, Salina. I'm a weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Eva does too. Eva, Eva has transferred. So look, here's the after of our salad. It's delicious and beautiful. It's going to taste amazing tomorrow. 
We're going to be eating this one for sure tomorrow. The cabbage salad will wait a long time before we eat that one. Yeah, and Paula says, so far they all look so good. Thank you, Paula, for watching. And when it comes to salads, they don't have to be boring. And there are so many different salads that you can make. And we are glad that you are getting some inspiration today. Yeah. So the next one is like, this is hands down my go-to because it's a crowd pleaser. It's easy to make and I absolutely love it. It's a Greek salad. So again, using a lot of the same ingredients. I don't think I'm shredding anymore. Look at my sink so everybody can see it. This is totally normal and acceptable to me that I would clean up as soon as I'm done making the salads. But I just think the sink, like Emilio might get hung up sometimes about mess. Um, that is not the case for me. And everybody's entitled to their own way. So that's cool. So, so we're going to do cucumber. Paula, uh, Paula says, I put soggy salad on new crispy salad so I don't waste the yummy dressing. <laughs> that's amazing, Paula. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, he will eat like even a sandwich where the lettuce has like turned com to complete, like it's almost see-through. And he'll eat that and enjoy it. And it's like, I have a hard time. It's delicious. Yeah. Everybody has their own. So here we have our cucumber. I'm just going to grab our, I have cherry tomatoes that Emilio picked up. We're doing Kalamata olives sliced. I always have these in my cupboard because I love Kalamata olives. And they're sliced because Eva can't have pits. Well, she can. She's old enough. But for right now, this makes it really easy for everybody to be able to partake. And a red pepper. Sorry. With a Greek salad, you generally have kind of the same ingredients, but you can feel feel free to switch them up. But I'm putting mine in a long dish because I think that's fun sometimes. Not a lot of people think about salads in like kind of long serving trays all the time. I cut my cucumber into quarters. Okay, I'm gonna wipe up this mayonnaise. Yeah, Salina says, yes, Sam, that's my thing too. It shows how creative we can get, right? <laughs> that's right, Absolutely. Girl. There is no right or wrong of doing things, right? Um, so if you know people who, you know, meal planning is something that they brought up before, it's great to ask them and know that you probably are holding within you knowledge that would really help them. And I'm talking about when advice is solicited, not unsolicited. But it's super fun to share recipes and cooking our one friend posts on Facebook all the time. She has a, a folder she calls Food on Filbert, and she posts amazing recipes and always shares how difficult they were and uh, or how easy it was, how the family reacted to it. You can use a whole tomato and then cut it up and dice it, but Emilio found cherry tomatoes that are a little bit on the green side, yeah. um, but this is what they had, so we were trying to accommodate. So I'm going to do probably about... Um, I think 10 to 15 of them, and then that'll be enough. And again, this is for like four adults as like the side dish. Any of these salads you kind of can beef up and make into larger size. The cabbage salad is really good on top of salads. So you make a lettuce salad and then you can dump some of that pickled cabbage stuff on top and it's delicious. We're gonna be using, this red onion has seen a lot of action tonight. We're gonna keep using him. If you don't like onions, you can always substitute for something like a shallot or just something that's a little bit less aggressive than the red onion. We'll peel the skin off. But yeah, it's nice when you have the recipes that have come down to you through friends and family, but often I am looking online and saying, I have a broccoli and um, I have this other ingredient, Brussels sprouts. What can I make with it? I don't know if anybody else is kind of like that, but the red onion I'm dicing bigger. I'm not cutting it as small because I want it to actually be a little bit chunkier. So these are like a large square. And I think I indicated, and for some people, maybe that's too much onion, but that's just the right amount for me. Yeah, I just, I just want to say, guys, about the dressing. <laughs> like, uh, the way that we do the dressing in that mason jar allows us to... We normally make salads like this, and then we don't put the dressing in the salad if we are not going to eat the whole thing. Because yeah. that way, we just put the salad in smaller bowls, and then we use the dressing that independently, so that everybody puts as much or as little as they want, and the salad then stays for longer in the fridge. Yeah. So I'm doing, I'm doing the same thing that I'm doing squares. Eva's asking us for something. I don't know what she... No, she's just talking. Okay. <laughs> I can see her, so she's fine. So, we've added those ingredients. Now we're going to put in some olives. And I'm going to grab a fork, please. 
Um, so maybe some of you didn't know this, but Emilio and I have been teaching and producing online courses for people um, that stemmed from workshops that we have given in the libraries to private companies. Um, and so you can find us on things like um, Skillshare, Udemy, Insight Timer, um, and we're also building our own platform, as I said, called Find Your Vita. So if you are on Instagram or Facebook, we would love it if you liked and subscribed into those channels because that's where we're going to be operating a lot of our how-to content. We'll still be here under KWPO, but we're really looking at expanding the educational offerings that we have before. So probably... I put in it, olives, it's like personal preference. We like a lot of olives, but I've probably put in about four tablespoons of, of sliced olives. So that's done. And then our almost finished step is the most wonderful feta cheese. And you can buy this already cubed. You can buy this at the market where they have a really nice like goat and cows um, feta. But this one is also pretty good. Trey Stella, I think is the name. So I'm just going to cut a chunk and it peels apart. So however you get it, you can cut it into cubes if you want so that you get kind of a chunk of cheese like this. Or you can crumb it with your fingers too, no? Yeah. I personally don't like this. I like crumbles. So that's how I make it. I just crumble it in my hands. I think the cheese kind of spreads over more of the ingredients that way and is a little bit more delicious. Cheese is again a preference, so more or little of it. You can have really good like vegan cashew cheeses and things like that that are great for Greeks because they tend to be on the saltier side. Just gonna wash my hands after. Feta cheese actually makes my hands kind of crack a lot. So I've started to uh, respect my hands a little bit more and clean up. Look at this. I just want to sh you to see this. We didn't have a place to hang towels really properly. So we just got some great 3M hooks and we can keep two tea towels here right overhead. Um, not convenient for Eva at this moment in time. We have to help her with that. But it has been so great because our, we don't have anything that hangs out. So it's a, a, good, a good compromise. So the next thing we're going to do is the, the dressing. I would again use this. Um, and I, I'll do it just for the sake of everybody seeing. I'll rinse out the last dressing. And we're going to do equal parts of our olive oil. What hands? Has anybody else worked in a restaurant? I know Laura has. So I think I said one one third of a cup or one quarter of a cup of the olive oil, the same of the vinegar. Sometimes if you are eyeballing the, the quantities, you can just shake it, give it a try. No, but look, see how you can see the parts of yeah. it separated? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to basically do three parts, but less of, this, of the sweet. So I'm only gonna do uh, about a tablespoon. And again, you can still see it. You can see my maple syrup, vinegar, olive oil. And then I'm going to add in, um, not celery seeds, basil. I'll do like a full pinch of the herbs into that. Some people don't like herbs in their salad dressing. So in that case, like just skip this. But for Greek salad, it's nice to have some some of that fragrant stuff and again if it, it was summertime i'd be using what's in my garden i'm also going to put a pinch of salt another way to do salad dressings too is using a magic bullet because mm -hmm. you can put garlic you can put ginger you can put pieces of things and then the blender will blend everything and we have ours like one of these guys just another idea mm -hmm love blending garlic in it never too much garlic so dressing's done pour it over top 
Again, this can go in a glass bowl and this can sit, honestly for me, this can't sit longer than two days with the dressing on it because the cucumbers get really soggy. Your peppers, your onions, the tomatoes, they all do really well, but cucumbers, they tend, they lose their crispness. And then for me, that's like a loss on the salad. So I can prepare this and not cut up the cucumber, but honestly, this is less than an eight minute salad and it's beautiful and delicious and it just tastes so good. So this is our Greek salad. And this was number four. So we're on to our last. And we have 10 minutes left, so it's good timing. So many salads in less I, than an hour. I will, I will cover this afterwards. Yeah, how, how would you cover it? So I wouldn't cover it, sorry. I would use just the glass container with a Tupperware lid. Yeah. Um, or I would put it in a Ziploc bag. I'm gonna put the cheese away. So, so far guys, which one is your favorite so far? If you have to pick one. Mine is the Greek, for sure. I think mine is the Greek too. Yeah, and I'm just gonna get a bowl, sorry. This is my last thing. It's not this one. So this next one is called salad in a wrap, or AKA fresh spring roll. Um, this one I learned to make at Seven Shores Cafe in Waterloo when Laura and I used to work there together. Um, it is the number one bestseller um, there, or used to be, and it's super easy to make, and it's just salad in a wrap, in a rice wrap. And some people can be really intimidated by the rice wrap, so that's why I thought, let's do one tonight. So I'm just uh -huh. gonna make two. I'm gonna cut up red pepper. So far we have both for the Greek. Do you know what? I'm not gonna broccoli. cut this. I'm just gonna use the mango salad because I'm cutting it the exact same way. And you guys will bear with me because that'll be easier. So in here, this is exactly how I'd cut it for the salad wrap, the red pepper. This is how I would cut the mango as well. And I didn't, I wasn't gonna put red onion in it, but I will put a little red onion in it. Okay, and then we have our cabbage. We need cashew butter or peanut butter or any kind of nut butter that you prefer. And I just need a spoon. So, so far, Greek salad for sure, Greek. I wanna try the broccoli one. Mm. Okay. Hey Blake, nice to see Blake? you. Blake? <laughs> oh Blake, I miss you. I wish we could play some board games together and you'll be really impressed. Emilio and I started snowboarding. Um, yeah. So yeah, maybe one day we'll be able to come out west and show you our skills. Anyways, this is the rice paper, okay? Maybe some of you have seen it before, maybe you haven't. Um, they sell it in almost every grocery store now, but if you needed to go to a special Asian market like TNT or New City, if you're local here, here's one. You can see how it reacts. It's firm, it's made out of rice. There's no other ingredients. I always like to take two at a time to make every wrap and that kind of guarantees that you're not going to have anything bust through. Um, and it also is just easier to handle. It holds together better. And that's how we did it at the cafe. So the first thing you need is warm tap water. And ours is already quite warm. Um, if, you can't, if you can't get warm tap water on the go, you can boil some water. Just don't let it come to a full boil because you'll burn yourself. Okay, so I have my metal bowl. I have just a little bit of water, kind of like two fingers worth in here. And I'm gonna take my two sheets of paper and I'm gonna dip them in the water. And then I'm gonna spin it because it's faster and easier and I'll notice when it's ready. And if you're like, how do I know when it's ready? It's like, you just know. It feels limp and noodly in your hand, like other things you might know feel limp and noodly. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, this is an adult show. That's all I'm gonna say about that. If so, I can do it, guys, you can do it. So look, here's here's our sheet. Look how loose it's become in the water. That's perfect, that's ready. Okay, so I'm gonna lay it down. Salina, the rice paper can be stored in the cupboard. It doesn't have to be on the in the fridge. It is not in the fridge. No, I no. wouldn't. It's and like it, pasta. You can treat you, it as pasta. Once dry you pasta. open it, like we just keep ours in a sealed Ziploc bag, and then it doesn't lose its its uh, freshness. So I'm taking my cashew butter um, or peanut or whatever nut butter you have, and I'm just going to spread it along here. Okay. Um, 
if this was a longer show, I could show you a, a recipe, which is you blend this with garlic and some chili flakes, and then that kind of just helps um, bring out a little bit more spiciness to the dip, but the nut butter is good. So I'm just gonna lick my fingers because I'm gonna eat this, not anybody else. Don't do that at home, please. <laughs> Don't do that at work, that's what you wanna say. So I'm taking about four red peppers and I'm putting it alongside the nuts. I'm gonna take four pieces of the mango. I mean, four is just a number. You can pick whatever you want, but this is like a nice portion and I'm stacking them in together. I'm gonna to take a couple of our red onions. There we go. And actually I did forget the cucumber. So excuse my reach. I think it tastes really good with cucumber. So again, I'm cutting a cucumber about this length, matchstick length. And you just want everything even so that when you bite it, all the flavors are mixed up and it's nice and... Have you made this before, Amelia? Yeah, one time, I think. You should make it again. But she, you just do it so well that I don't need to do it. <laughs> so here I have my cucumbers. I'm adding that. And then you can use carrot. You can use, you can use anything shredded. The purple cabbage looks amazing. So I'm just going to take a pile of that and put it on top rinse my hand and then this is the fun part pick up your bottom edge flip it over wrap it up like a blankie it's okay to have little purple pieces here that's not a big deal fold in one side fold in the other side and then tuck and turn and you can be kind of firm because you want it to stay connected but here's our little beautiful little sausage vegetable friend and then to be fancy you can cut it in half and it looks amazing you can plate it with some like sweet chili sauce you can make a mango sauce look at that and you stack that up and you can do a whole tray of those it's a great appetizer but it's a great salad just in a bite like if i was eating this for lunch i would eat two as like a side or four as like a main and you just feel so full um, you can ask Laura, we used to survive off of these. So that was our last salad. Again, you can play around with the ingredients that go inside of it. If you were to search fresh spring roll, you're going to find a lot of different options available to you online. But this, this is such a nice treat. The rice paper will only last about a day. So to keep it longer, I can prepare all of these and then put a wet paper towel over top in a sealed container and then pull it out for a dinner or something like that. But they're not, the rice is going to turn very firm probably after about 24 hours. So you can always peel it open, eat everything inside and not eat the rice, but it's pretty unenjoyable after that. So. So what did you think guys? Did you like we're the- We're at the end. Whew. I just didn't think I was gonna make it. But three minutes left, time. three minutes left. Cheers. Um, <laughs> I wanted to let everybody know, um, in case you're just turning, tuning in now, that we launched Find Your Vita. So come over and find us on Instagram or Facebook and like us there. It's again where we're going to be sharing more educational stuff. This is my 10th year of sobriety this February. So I just wanted to mention that as well. I'm pretty proud of myself. But have fun in the kitchen. Enjoy the kitchen. Join us tomorrow night. Emilio's going to be there. He's going to be talking about how we actually build out the meal plan, how we avoid big stressors, how we do the grocery shopping, how we put things away. How do we um, compromise to avoid discussions? <laughs> how do we work in a kitchen together and still be able to function? And just kind of things like that. It's also a big Q&A too. So if you do have questions, we are both going to be there, but he's going to be the face that you see. He said he's going to shave for it. Maybe. Just here he comes. Let's see. Maybe yeah. I shave, maybe I don't. I don't care. Yeah. So, so, so thank you, right, thank you to so everyone much, yeah. for coming. And um, if you have more questions, let us know. Emilio is going to share the recipes. I made a really nice PDF, so it's all on one page. And uh, yeah, I hope that you enjoy some of these. And now you know what I'm bringing to the potlucks. Yeah. And for tomorrow, guys, if you have any questions about the organization of meal planning, something that you want me to address, uh, share it in the in the comments below or share it in the next event that is already posted on our Facebook page. Just write down the questions that you have because I'm so happy to to uh, uh, cover them. Okay. We're a split vote on whether you should shave or not. Okay. I have to kiss you, so I say shave. <laughs> I will say if I have time, I will. But yeah, I will see you tomorrow at 8 p.m. Okay. 
Adiós. Have a good night, guys.